Here, for the last 14 years, Benveniste has headed a 40-strong team of doctors and scientists doing groundbreaking research into allergies. His problems began 10 years ago when one of his teams started research into homeopathy. In the light of later events, he feels the need to declare his original scepticism. My usual joke about this is that the first time I heard the word homeopathy, I thought it was a sexual disease. <laughs> it's going too far because I knew barely what was homeopathy, but I, I, I am the most classical MD and the most classical scientist and the most rationalistic person you can find. Homeopathy is a branch of alternative medicine which is widely available in France. But in fact, few doctors prescribe it because its medicines are based on a theory conventional science says is wholly irrational. Homeopaths believe that the more a medicine is diluted, the more effective it becomes. To make their remedies, their drugs are repeatedly diluted in water and shaken in a special way. Often the medicines are so dilute they end up as little more than water. So why on earth did Benveniste think it worth investigating? The story is the, is the following. There was a, an MD in my lab who was doing classical research also. And once he told me that he, he was an homeopathic doctor. And I said, fine. Then he came back and he said, do you mind if I try to dilute uh, some of our reagents and see if they do something on cells? And I remember vividly, that was 19... 82 or 83, that I told him, okay, look, uh, do it, but this is water. It's going to do nothing. But puzzlingly, the researchers' initial tests showed an effect. So Benveniste put one of his best technicians onto it, Elizabeth Davener. She was skilled in a technique developed by Benveniste himself, using an allergen, like this antiserum, to test people's blood for allergies. So Benveniste asked her to dilute the antiserum in exactly the way homeopaths make their remedies, by successive dilutions in water, interspersed by vigorous shaking. The shaking, say homeopaths, energizes the water. But as at each stage the solution is diluted by a factor of 10, after the second dilution it's a hundred times weaker, and a billion by the ninth. In fact, above the 20th, there's literally nothing left of the original starting substance. Benveniste then asked for the highest dilutions to be added to the blood samples. If someone's allergic, particular blood cells called basophils will explode or degranulate on contact with an allergen, releasing histamine. But now that the allergen had been so highly diluted, Benveniste was sure his top assistant would see nothing. But astonishingly, she recorded almost as many cells degranulated by the homeopathic dilutions as by the original full-strength allergen. The very first thought was that there was an error. But when I got the second set of data, I had the feeling of setting the foot in a completely unknown world, something that... that was so strange that I couldn't even envision what was going on. We know that there is nothing that can make basophil degranulate by themselves. And therefore, if they were degranulating, if they were disappearing, is that something specific happened to them. But this something specific, specific was water. And this was flabbergasting. Unable to ignore such extraordinary results and his natural scientific curiosity aroused, Benveniste ordered an in-depth program of research to get to the bottom of it all. After two or three years of experiments, we reached the conclusion that we could indeed obtain specific biological activity uh, with a trigger that had been diluted billion, billion, billion times, for example. So there was no possibility that any molecule could survive in this solution. Uh, therefore, we had to envision the fact that everything was going on as if water was capable of memorizing the molecule it had seen at the beginning of the dilution. And billions and billions and billions of dilution after, it still knew with some process that it had seen that molecule. And hence was coined the expression, 
the memory of water. Polémique euh, autour d'une découverte faite par un Français, le professeur Benvenis. Qui se... In France, the memory of water became a media sensation. But he wanted recognition from the scientific press, in particular Nature. Nature, published in Britain, is the world's leading science journal. Scientists vie to submit their work to its referees in the hope of publication. They took a dim view of the memory of water. And so did Dr. Maddox, the editor. Benvenise sent us a paper, which seemed to us quite extraordinary. We sent it out to referees. They all said to a man that um, they thought the work was very impressive. They didn't believe a word of it. So Nature asked Benvenise for more evidence. After two years' further work, he sent it in. But Maddox remained highly skeptical because the memory of water seemed to have no physical basis. I thought and thought a lot about it and said, right, we're not going to publish. I wrote and told him that and he called up very angrily saying you're suppressing one of the great discoveries of the 20th century. Now, I forget whether it was then or later that he compared himself to Galileo and he harangued me again about the importance of the work and Uh, the prejudice of journals like Nature against it. And I said, okay, we'll publish on this condition that you let us come to your lab and uh, see what's actually going on. In June 88, Nature finally published Benvenis's findings, but with a hostile editorial saying that if he were right, much of modern science would have to be junked. Nature promised an inquiry. The paper was published to the condition that I would uh, accept that a committee would come to my lab to see the data. And this was perfectly acceptable. Except that when the committee came, I had names that I never heard of in, in science and realized that uh, they were essentially fraudbusters, not, not scientists. Benveniste himself filmed the committee's visit. There were three of them, Walter Stewart, a writer on fraud in science, James Randi, a magician who'd investigated Yuri Geller, and Maddox himself, who admits they set out to find fraud. To be frank, um, I had talked uh, this whole Benveniste problem over with some colleagues of mine in America uh, who, who had been concerned with scientific fraud. And uh, they took the view that Benveniste was not a fraud, but it could well be that somebody in his lab was playing a trick on him. One of the things you mentioned, Elizabeth, was the number... The Nature Trio spent days questioning Benveniste and his staff. What we found was that his whole team was playing a trick on itself. They very rarely made these measurements blind which meant that anyone who knew what he was looking for could bias his own counting to get the kind of answer he expected. Now, worse than that, his assistant, a woman called Elizabeth, kept the neatest notebook, but uh, she filled it in only after the experiments were done and didn't enter the experiments that didn't work. But Ben Veniste was equally critical of the committee when they asked to supervise an experiment. They hastily reproduced the experiment, participating themselves in the process, which is completely unheard of. Uh, obviously, they were not expert. And one experiment failed, and then they decided that the whole thing was worthless. That's it. It was a pantomime. They had a code that they called double blind, but it's uh, absolutely not. And they knew the code. I mean, can you imagine that? A sticked envelope to the, to, to, to the ceiling, and Randy played tricked in the middle of the experiment. Everybody was laughing. And uh, let me sum up the whole thing. It was typical of something that looked like a McCarthy investigative uh, committee, you know, at that time. Uh, it's witch hunt. They, they, were there, they were out to kill. They were never out to, to seek the truth. Nature announced its damning verdict. In France, there was uproar. Benveniste was no longer a media hero, he was a scandal. The memory of water became the Benveniste